Welcome back to module 12 of object oriented analysis and design. We are discussing relationship among objects and in the earlier part we have discussed the link relationship between objects and talked about the links to for message flow. We have discussed about different roles that objects can have controller, server and proxy. We have discussed about visibility and three kinds of mutual exclusion control for synchronization, sequential control, guarded control and concurrent control. Next we will talk about the relationship of aggregation. So, aggregation denotes basically uh, denotes a whole part hierarchy, some kind of a whole part hierarchy, which gives us the ability to navigate from the whole or the aggregate to its parts that is the content objects. So, the aggregation is a relationship where one object necessary in some way is a collection of other objects or one object is a some way a component of other objects and so on. But the interesting point for in aggregation or the uh, relationship of aggregation is that it may or may not be denote physical containment. What does it say? That aggregation basically can be of two types. One is where the physical containment is necessary. I talk about an airplane object, I talk about its engine object. Naturally, the airplane has a physical containment of the engine. Car has wheel objects, book has chapters, chapters has sections, sections have paragraphs, paragraphs have sentences, sentences have words, so on and so forth. So, these are all physical containment. And the other could be conceptual aggregation of the kind that I uh, talked about in the last lecture of this module is uh, where the physical containment is not present, but there is a conceptual containment, conceptual aggregation in the sense that the relationship between shareholders and the share, both are objects, they are related, but share is not a part of the shareholder and vice versa. Library has users, but users are not part of the library, they are not components of the library. But when you talk about library and books, then there is a physical containment. So, both of these are known as aggregation and since uh, physical containment is a, is a stronger sense, so an alternate name for physical uh, containment is strong aggregation and the conceptual one is more commonly referred to as weak aggregation. You can realize that uh, we have several times talked about has a relationship. So, strong aggregation necessarily is has a relationship and uh, many of uh, us refer to the weak aggregation as simple has relationship. So, now we have aggregation and links. So, if you ask as to what, what should be the way you should model that is uh, should you model in terms of the strong one or the weak one, uh, whether containment is better, physical containment is better, whether just associations are better and so on. The answer is both of them exist because there are different situations for their use. It is in some cases aggregation is better because it keeps the objects within itself as, as physically contained parts. So, they are by the principles of encapsulation, they are encapsulated secrets of the object that is all of us have seen aircrafts, but we have not seen their its engine. But links may be better in some other cases, because links do not physically contain an encapsulate. So, they provide a more flexible loose coupling between objects. So, this is the basic uh, notion of aggregation to work with. So, we will uh, just take a look into uh, a couple of uh, simple examples. Here is one uh, example of a temperature controller which has three objects. Certainly, this one the first one is the controller which decides uh, to maintain a certain temperature profile for an industrial process. The temperature profile that needs to be maintained is an object itself which we say is a temperature ramp 
that is how the temperature should increase, how should it decrease and so on. And certainly to actuate this whole process we have a heater which can be turned high, turned low and so on. So, if we look into these then here we see a link where the temperature controller sends message to the ramp saying that uh, this is the kind of uh, profile that you need to schedule, this is a time when the temperature should start increasing, this much it should increase and so on. So, those information can be sent in terms of request from the temperature controller to the temperature ramp. But if you look at the heater, heater necessarily is a part of the temperature controller, it is a component of the temperature controller. So, there is an aggregation in terms of this heater which exists in the temperature controller system. So, this is we just took we are just taking very simple examples to illustrate what uh, different relationships could be in a real system. Let us uh, uh, look at look back at our uh, leaf management system. So, this is just a simple a partial model of the leaf management system. So, you are already aware of uh, many of these uh, objects like certainly I will have leaf management system. So, I will have leaf object, the leaf is for the employee. So, I have employee object and I am just depicting a situation where uh, as you have studied the there are number of leaves like the sick leave and maternity leave and so on where we need uh, separate documentation, we need uh, certificates from doctor, we need uh, medical reports and so on for that leave to be approved or for that leave to be placed in the system. So, if we look into this that part of the uh, LMS system only a part of that which has some of the objects, then we expect that there will be an a, there will be certainly an employee object. Now, certainly the employee in this case will decide whether he or she wants to apply for leave or if the employee is an is a lead or a manager then uh, he or she would decide whether some leave should be approved or not. Which means in essence it means that these employee object is kind of the driver in the system. So, we will immediately say that this is a controller object. Now, it sends messages along this link, it sends messages along this link. So, the message along the employee to leave link could be a apply leave message where an executive or a lead is applying for a leave. This link from employee to doctor could be a request certificate link, the employee has not been keeping good health. So, goes to the doctor and requests for a certificate. If you look at the certificate, the doctor will issue the certificate in this link based on the status of the employee, the health status of the employee I mean. So, if you look at the, the certificate object here, then the certificate object receives a request from the doctor that a certain type of certificate will have to be issued. So, this will have to be printed or electronically signed and so on. So, it just serves that request. So, we say it is a server object which receives the issue message from the doctor and serves it. So, what is the doctor object? The doctor object is on one side it receives the request certificate the one that we saw here from the employee which comes on this link and on the other side it will send a request for issue to the certificate object on the other link. So, it is in both. So, we identify that the doctor object is a proxy object in this situation. Now, if we look into the leave, so certainly an employee has applied for leave that is not the only leave object in the system. Certainly, there will be several other requests from the employees. So, we can conceive of a collection of leave that exist in the system and we say this is a leave record. So, the leave record will not contain will not encapsulate all the leaves rather it will be a list with appropriate uh, pointers or references to different leave objects much in the way that uh, a shareholder talks about his share or I talk about my bank account in a similar manner. So, you can say leave records has a weak aggregation of the leave 
and you can see that in terms of this uh, diagram we are showing this aggregation uh, with a certain uh, type of uh, uh, drawing where there is a diamond at the aggregate end which is empty and this emptiness represent weak aggregation. So, now if we look at the leaf itself then we know that the leaf in this case we will need to have the documentation, the documentation of the doctor's certificate, the documentation of the different medical reports may be the x-ray report, the ECG report and so on and so forth. So, the leaf has weak aggregation of documentation. Now, leaf will not contain the documentation, it is not a part of that, but leaf will make references to the documentation. So, this is another situation of weak aggregation as depicted here. Now, let us look at the documentation object itself. The documentation is the bundle of the certificate and the different reports. So, the documentation is has certificate as a component of it, because your documentation file which in terms of if you think in terms of the physical situation then it is a documentation file which has papers showing the doctor certificate, papers showing the medical reports and so on. So, all of that the reports and all those I am not showing here, I have just shown the certificate becomes a strong aggregation or a strong or a component of the documentation. Therefore, if you just look at the diamond here, this diamond is a filled up one unlike these diamonds which are empty ones depicting weak aggregation, here it is a filled up diamond depicting strong aggregation. So, this was just uh, referring back to our leaf management system to show that uh, the concepts of relationship amongst objects that we have just understood in this module are can be found our found plenty in terms of our leaf management system. We have just taken a look into one part of the system you can I would encourage you to look into the whole specification and listen to the uh, tutorial that we have put up on the leaf management system and identify more and more object relationships in the leaf management system. So, in this module we have discussed to summarize in this module we have discussed the object relationship that is how does the objects relate between themselves, how do they collaborate with each other through messages and we have noted that such communication links between object, uh, such communication channels between objects is known as links and using the link the object can provide services or invoke services or the navigate from one object to another.